Look at this old school, crusty, dusty <laughs> Batman. <laughs> What's up, comic book peeps? Welcome to another episode of Direct Edition, the channel is Fred Hall Direct Edition. And today we're going to be doing what we always do, and that's another comic book haul. So without further ado, I just wanted to show you some of my uh, Secret Empires that I have. The Secret Empire Zero, right there. Uh, that's Secret Empire Free Comic Book Day. We have Secret Empire number one, two, three, and four. And I'm missing five and six, even though I have a subscription box. So I'm pretty bummed out about that. But uh, I did pick up, you know, another, uh, I said Secret Empire, right? So I just want to make sure I didn't say Civil War. But <laughs> yeah, so I'm up to four. And I'm missing five and six, and I know we're up to number seven right now. But before we do anything, let's get into our sponsor. And this episode of Direct Edition is brought to you by... My Fake Darth Maul from China. And you know how we do on this channel. Let's get into some comics. Okay, so I know you guys and girls have already seen this um, This one. This is Astonishing X-Men um, number one. You know, I made sure I picked it up and put it in my uh, subscription box. As well as uh, Harley Quinn. I think we're, it's like 23 and 24, the connecting covers. So I'm just cleaning out my box in, um, at Archaic Comics, which is the one of the greatest comic book stores. You know what I'm saying? It's a small comic book shop. Um, Adam started out with basically, um, new comics and now he's starting to get into, um, back issues and it's pretty cool, man. So definitely had to pick this one up. Love this new one, Astonishing X-Men number one. And like I said, I know you've seen this in other people video, but I just wanted to show it to you. So let's keep going. And like I said, I'm missing Secret Empire, um, five and six, but Adam, um, reordered it for me, but I definitely wanted to show you number seven which is pretty cool. I love that cover. You know, a couple of videos back, I was ranting and raving about uh, Thor, God of Thunder, especially a series called The God Butcher with Gore, the God Butcher. And so when I saw this old man, what is it called? Uh, King Thor. When I saw King Thor versus Galactus on the cover, I definitely had to pick this up. Yes, that's King Thor. He looks just like Odin. And that's Galactus, and it's a pretty good run. So I definitely want to get um, Thor, God of Thunder, Volume 1 and Volume 2. This is very awesome, man. Definitely, definitely am a fan of Thor now. So for you Star Wars fan, I know you guys know that uh, Darth Vader is facing this uh, Jedi, and he's trying to get the Kyber Crystal from the Jedi from the Jedi's lightsaber to build his red lightsaber. And that's where his red lightsaber comes from, which is a pretty cool story because we never knew where his uh, lightsaber came from. But this is a variant edition of number three. So it's pretty cool, man. Adam was like, hey, man, I put a variant in your box. You might as well pick it up. And I was like, you know what? I might as well pick it up because he did the same thing with Darth Vader number one. You know, I wasn't going to collect it, but since he put it in my box, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and pick it up. You know, I had an opportunity to pick up part two, but I'm not really into um, the single issues of Darth Vader run. I really want to pick up the trade paperback or trade hardcover of uh, Darth Vader. So thought this was pretty cool, man. Very cool variant. And so I know I'm late to the party, but I actually got this all-star Batman. I didn't realize I was John Romita Jr. And, uh, you know, I think his artwork is okay on this front cover. So I'm not going to give him hell in this video, but definitely a cool book to pick up, man. Especially at like $1.25 from Second and Charles. So can't beat that, man. Very cool. With the Batman crowbar. Very cool. 
So next on our list, we have Extreme X-Men number 38. Yes, number 38. And the significance of this book is that um, in most of the X-Men titles, they will have a cover like this with Storm. So my next variant video, I'm actually going to bring out, you know, I think I have like three of these covers where she's like in the storm, you know, one, she's crying um, in the earlier one. It's a, I think it's like an uncanny X-Men. She's crying in a storm because she, she had just broke up with Forge. And they also have another one, which is um, another uncanny X-Men, which is like a Greg Land drawing where she's actually smiling in the storm. And then this extreme X-Men, she's just kind of like, you know, feeling the, the rain or whatever. But all the covers are pretty cool. And I think um, not too many people caught on to that. But me being a big uh, Storm fan, you know, I definitely caught on to that. I love uh, Aurora Monroe. I think she's uh, very cool. Very, uh, She's actually my favorite um, superheroine. So, yeah, very cool. Extreme X-Men. So this is a pretty cool book. This is Batman and the Shadow. And not a lot of people know that uh, Batman was basically um, based off the Shadow. So it's pretty cool to see them um, team up and cross over. This is one of six. I could have picked up all six, but I wanted to expand the comics that I was picking up. I hate to pick up like complete runs if I'm trying to, you know, get like a variety of comics. I, I take variety over you know, complete runs a lot of times. And that's why I have to go in later and plug in the holes and plug in the gaps. But this is one that I'm just okay with number one. I just want a number one. Batman and Shadow, very cool. The Shadow is a old, old, old comic book uh, superhero. He predates Batman. Like I said, Batman was, was um, inspired by him a lot. So very cool, man. I love this cover. Yep. And just like that, speaking about runs, let's do this. Uh, I got a pretty good Darkness run this time. I really do like Darkness. I think uh, Mark Silvestri did a hell of a good job on a lot of his covers. And this is Darkness number three. Very cool. You see Darkness down there? Defeated. So, from what I've heard and what I've read, Darkness is was a, an Italian mob member who has the special power of um, conjuring his goblins to do his bidding. So he's a very cool character. But this is Darkness number three. Darkness number four, Mark Silvestri. Darkness number six, Mark Silvestri. Darkness number one, very cool. Number two. Number four. Very cool. Number six. <laughs> and we have number seven. Pretty cool cover. Another Darkness number seven. This is a later year. And lastly, we have Darkness number 37. So I'm pretty happy to pick up a, a good amount of Darkness to put in my collection, even though it skips from different volumes. I think I got like up to, you know, uh, three volumes of different books. And it's fine because, you know, it's all good. So there you have it. And here's another look at some of the cool covers that I was able to pick up. Like I said, uh, you know, I've always kind of been a Darkness fan. I just never pulled the trigger on a lot of his books. So I thought now more than ever would be a good time. You know, I love my independent top cow. You know what I'm saying? So Definitely was happy to pick this up. 
All right, so let's get into some more comics. So it's always a good day when you're able to pick up some Batmans. This is uh, Batman number 620. I'm almost sure that's uh, Killer Croc in the back. This is a storyline right after the Hush series. So I picked up a couple, you know, after that run. So this is 620. This is 625. Cool Joker cover. Number 629. Jason Lives. I'm a huge fan of uh, Jason Todd. If you haven't seen uh, Batman Under the Red Hood, the animated movie it is very good. To me, it's the best Batman animated movie that they've made. Besides uh, the Phant Phantasm? Something like that. The Mask of the Phantasm. Something like that. But yeah, this is a... Uh, I, I love that movie. Uh, that animated movie... Um, under the Red Hood. Very cool. So what was that? That was 629. Let's jump to 641. That looks like a Ra's al Ghul knife in his hand. Red Hood's hand. That's that 641. 644 with the black mask. Definitely have to go back and get his first appearance because it's still like reasonable. So 644. 646. Very cool. 647. And lastly, 647. Very cool. Like I said, I love my Jason Todd. So very cool. Okay, for some reason, Deathmate always has had my heart, and I can't pass up on, you know, getting um, any of the Deathmates, especially the black one, because I know that the black one is the first appearance of uh, Gen 13. Excuse me, I'm moving around too much. But I uh, definitely love my Deathmates, especially when I could pick them up at such a cheap price. So this is Deathmate, what, September? Oh, this is the black one. So this is the first appearance of uh, Gen 13 in here. Uh, very cool, man. Very cool. Definitely love Rip Claw, even though he's a knockoff of Wolverine. I still think he's very cool. This looks like a Mark. Yep, Mark Silvestri cover. Um, the reason why I said that, if you allow my sixty fingers to interrupt your video, right there it says Mark Silvestri. So definitely have to get my Death Mates every time I see them. My favorite cover is the one with uh, the girl from um, Young Blood. The she was like a silverish color. And uh, Solar Man, when he was like, it looks like he's like laying hands on her like a preacher. It's a very cool cover. That's one of the first Deathmates that ever came out. The problem with Deathmate was when I was growing up and I was trying to collect them was they didn't reach the store when they said they was going to reach the store. So you know how sometimes you wait around for a month for the book to come out and you're like, yeah, I can't wait for the book to come out. Well, it never did. And that's what killed the hype and the epicness of this Deathmate run. But now that I'm older, you know, I can care less because they're in the 50 cent bins everywhere. But I remember the hype around this and I remember the big letdown of the Deathmate series because, like I said, they couldn't get them on the shelf in time. The same thing happened with Darth Maul. Darth Maul, you cannot get them to the shelf on time. So by the time you got to the third Darth Maul, you know, it's, it's like, you know, do I complete this series or do I even care anymore? Because I bought Darth Maul number one, number two. And then it seemed like, I was like, where's number three at? Number three almost took like two months to come out, which is a shame. But anyway, very cool. All right, y'all, the guys and girls, or well, the girls and guys that's been paying attention to my channel. I promise I won't pick up another Doom 2099. This has to be like my fourth copy. But if you look, that's a newsstand copy, so I definitely had to pick it up. Definitely love my 2099. Love the glare off of it. If you allow my sexy hands to interrupt your video, sexy fingers to interrupt your video one more time. Look at that metallic. Look at that metallicness. Look at that. Now you tell me this doesn't. If you were born in the 80s. 
or even the 90s. That doesn't take you back. That's old school there. Love it. Doom 2099. So speaking of Doom, I got Dooms 3. I just picked it up. I don't know why I picked this up. Uh, I don't know. Maybe just to pick at Liefeld, but this is like really cheesy 90s. So for you 90s comic book fans, look at this Dooms 3 from Rob Liefeld. I don't, I'm not sure if him and Bad Rock are related or, you know, any kind of similarities. He looks like the red hawk without a nose and hair. But, uh, yeah, I picked this up just for the hell of it, just to laugh at the cover. And it's pretty cool, too, except for that pimple that he has on his shoulder. Is that pimple right there? But anyway, yeah, I don't know why I picked this up. Wah, wah, wah. So give me some of that good old Doctor Strange and Adam Warlock. This is Doctor Strange number 36. And I definitely want to start beefing up my Doctor Strange collection. I don't have, I'm, I'm ashamed to say, as long as I've been collecting, I don't have a lot of Doctor Strange comics. But I do have a couple that I want to get. I definitely want to get the one that got Marvel sued, where they took um, a singer's album cover, a uh, female, and they basically implanted that or drew that on a Doctor Strange cover. And that cover is absolutely beautiful. If I get a chance, I'm going to put it in the back of the video. So I just have to remember to look up that famous Doctor Strange cover. But I definitely want to show it to you guys. Like I said, this is Doctor Strange number 36. You got Adam Warlock. This is right after the Infinity War. So uh, Warlock still has... Adam Warlock still has the gauntlet. Adam Warlock is it was known as... What was it known as? Him. So pretty cool, man. Definitely cool. And look at that old picture of Gamora. Did you know that? See how Gamora used to look? Look at the breast assist. That's a little too much for me. But anyway, yeah. So my boy Samuel Trejo. Samuel. And you pronounce it Trejo because the J is a H when you're Hispanic. I hope I said your name right. Him and the Frog Queen, they kind of inspired me to uh, reach outside of the normal two, which is Marvel and DC. Um, so I've been picking up a lot of Top Cow and a lot of Dark Horse lately. Um, those two, basically, the Frog Queen and Samuel, they basically, uh, <laughs> the Frog Queen, that's, that's actually the name of her channel. They actually uh, read a lot of indie indie books, like even Dark Horse and Top Cow is considered like marvel and dc compared to what they read and uh, i like watching their videos because they make my brain expand outside of the big two and i picked this up this uh dark horse presents just because i thought it was cool man very cool cover definitely hope it's a first appearance in there if not it's fine but i'm definitely going to do my research on this book and uh you know i definitely love my xenomorphs so, yeah, pretty cool. So, we had the point of video where you asked me, hey, Fred Hall, direct edition, what are you reading right now? And this is what I'm reading. This is all new X-Men, here to stay. I think this is a volume two. Let me check. Yes, this is definitely volume two. So, here's a cool look at the front of the book. And here's a cool look at the back of the book. As you can see, Kitty Pride, and you see Professor X Shadow in the back. Uh, this is a very cool book because this introduces the new Brotherhood of Evil Mutants that's led by Mystique. So very cool. So six through ten, this is what this collects. So that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's five books. So very cool. And the crazy thing about this hardcover is I already, I already had uh, number nine in this hardcover. But I bought number nine in a single issue. I find myself doing that a lot. You know, even though I have it in hardcover, I just want the single issue. And the reason why I got the single issue, you know, I showed it on one of my earlier videos, is because that's a very cool Mystique and uh, Sabretooth cover. 
and that's the beginning of the new Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. So without further ado, let's get into your main events, which you have a couple of. I think you have like three main events, so let's get into them. Okay, so there you have it. Your first main event is uh, The Death in the Family. This is Batman number 14. A uh, very cool Joker cover. I do have this hard cover already, but I definitely had to get this single issue. They had um, two of them at $5 at Second and Charles, but I only bought one for $5. Um, now that I look back on it, I kind of wanted both of them, um, two of them, but I just say, you know, I'm going to just chill out and I'm going to go ahead and uh, just, uh, you know, leave the other one there because I was already over budget. But definitely love this cover. This is when the Joker, you know, cuts off his face and he goes after each member of the Batman family. At the end, he sit them down at a table with uh, all their faces sliced off in the plate that he served them. But um, at the end of the day, you find out that that really wasn't their face. Their face was still attached to him. So great Greg Capullo. Is it Capullo run? I think it is. So, uh, yeah, it's Capullo at, Rock, at Scott Snyder. So. Definitely cool cover. Glad to have this in my collection, only for $5. And that's your first main event. Your second main event is this Wonder Woman number 50, number 50 from 1991. I got this for $1.25, and when I got home and I eBayed it. When I got home and eBayed it. This is like a $10 book and above. So I'm very glad that I was able to do a stealth buy on this. I, I guess that's what you guys call a stealth buy. And uh, yeah, man, it's a very cool cover. Uh, you got George Perez. So, you know, George Perez is a legend in the business. And definitely glad to have this in my collection, especially in my Wonder Woman collection. So, yeah, definitely glad to have this. And speaking of Wonder Woman, I might as well leave that up because this is uh, Wonder Woman. This is Wonder Woman special number one. Uh, let me see what year it is. 1992. And this is another stealth buy because it's a dollar twenty-five. And when I got home, this book is like a ten dollar book and above. This is Wonder Woman versus Deathstroke the Terminator. Very cool cover. Definitely glad to have this in my collection. I love my Wonder Woman's, and I will continue to co to collect her, whether it be the newer books or the older books. I've just become a, a foaming at the mouth Wonder Woman fan. And there you have it. Very cool main events. And so once again, I would like to thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Direct Edition. Remember the channel was Fred Hall Direct Edition. You guys be safe out there. Words of wisdom. Focus on the ones that show you love. On the ones that don't show you love, forget about them. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it positive. And I pray that you guys be successful in everything that you do. And I will catch you guys later. Be safe out there. Peace.